Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Maxco Tech. In this short video, we are going to show you how you can mount an S3 bucket inside your Docker container. So we will just gonna be building one single Docker file that you can utilize and add on your business project to use on your own projects. Just to be clear that this video is not about I'm showing you how Docker works, how to create S3 bucket or how to create IAM users to allow users to access your S3 bucket. So these are all the prerequisites that you need to know about already. So as you can see, we have our S3 bucket in here, which we are going to test against our SDFS mount. And I also have created an IAM user with the following S3 read and write permissions. So this policy is required in order to allow your S3FS uh, to mount successfully and of course read and write uh, to and from the S3. So make sure you have the user created and you also have the security credentials created for your user. And these are the security credentials which we are going to use to allow S3FS to access the S3 bucket. So let's get started. So our Docker file will consist of two layers. The first one will be the environments which will take from the base image Python 3.8 Slim Images using root user is not actually recommended. So that's why we're creating our own user located at home op. The name is op and the UID will be 50,000. Then setting up some labels and then some uh, required args, which we are going to need. Uh, in this case, the bucket name itself, the S3 endpoint. And based on these args, we will set some environment variables. Then we start a second layer, keeping the first layer as the base image. And after that, we are going to install S3FS. Then we are going to need some args for S3 credentials, access key ID and access key secret. Now to set up the S3 configs, we have to add this S3FS line on etcfs tab file. So this line is actually defining the mount location of our S3 bucket, formatted as S3FS, then the bucket name, and then the path where you need to mount this, and then some bunch of other configurations like allow other is going to make sure that all other users can uh, use this. Uh, but S3FS has a nice option of specifying which exact user you want to allow this to. So in this case, we are specifying the ID of the operating user. And finally, we also have to specify the S3 endpoint. In my case, my bucket is an EUS one, but make sure to change this according to the location of your bucket. Then we also have to uncomment one single line from the fuse configs, which is allow other users. So basically S3FS uses fuse and for fuse to allow non-root users to work on this S3FS mounted directory, we have to make sure that we uncomment this line here, allow other users. So finally, all of our root privileges uh, commands are finished. So we can now move to our operator user. Then we are going to create uh, this S3FS credentials file in our uh, container. So we are going to take these access key and secret access key from the build args. File looks something like this. We have access key ID, then columns, then access secret key. We'll store this in S3FS credentials file. We grant minimal permissions for this file. And then finally, we have to make sure that the location that in which we are mounting our S3 bucket, that location exists. So in this case, we are going to create the directory in our home location as the name of the bucket itself. Don't forget to also make your working directory as your home directory, which I missed earlier, but I can add it in here, so that's fine. Now all S3FS configurations are set. We have defined the configs. We have also provided the S3FS credentials file. Now it's time to mount the bucket and start using. We are actually going to do that in the runtime. So when you actually run your container uh, by command docker run. So as part of the entry point bash script, we are going to mount this uh, S3 bucket as file system. We are creating an inline entry point bash script here. So the first command in here should be mount all. And then we are testing and looking at the directories inside the S3 bucket. We give this entry point as executable permissions. And then finally, we are going to add the entry point at last. So that should be it as part of our Docker file. I'm going to go ahead and add a bonus code in here for you guys, which is going to be our Python script. So very minimal Python script, just taking the arguments as uh, the bucket name itself. And uh, it's actually checking whether this directory is mounted or not. And we are going to run this script as part of our entry point. So, so instead of listing directories here, we are going to execute our Python file, Python main.py, and it is going to take the arguments from the command line. And last but not least, we have to copy this main.py file inside our container. 
In fact, I can keep them all together. So at the time we changed the user, we changed the working directory, and then we copy this main.py file in our home directory. Now that should be it. Let us quickly test that and see if it works. So I'm using podman, which is like really similar to Docker. All of the commands are same exactly. So don't get confused with this. So this is going to work exactly the same if you're using Docker. So we say podman build. Uh, we are building the current Docker file in here. We tag this as uh, SPFS mount, and then we have to provide required build args. So the first one will be the bucket name itself, which is the one I already created. And then you have to provide the access key ID and the secret access key, which you should already have in your AWS account IAM user. So let's build this. Our image is finally built. Now let us go ahead and test it. So one thing to keep in mind is that S3FS always works with privileged access on the containers. So whenever you run your container, you have to make sure that you are specifying privileged args with the container itself as part of your run command. So now we uh, provide our Python args in here, which is in this case, bucket name as max tag bucket. Now let us run this and see how it looks. Checking mount status. Bucket mounted successfully. When it lists the directories, we see the current directories in our S3 bucket, which looks exactly the same as we have in our S3 bucket. So let us create a new folder in here. Um, name it as uh, something called, I don't know, bar. And now let us run this again and see if we see that new directory in here. Nice, so we have bar in here. One last thing we can experiment here is that SSH into the container and try to create a directory from the container and see if it reflects in the S3 bucket. So uh, instead of uh, giving args in here, we are going to override the entry point as bin bash. Now we are inside the container and if you say ls the bucket oh sorry because uh, our entry point was actually doing the mount so we have since overrided so this script is not working anymore so we have to make sure that we run this script first before doing anything so mount a now at this point our s3 bucket should be mounted if you say ls mexico tech we can see our s3 content so let us create a directory here touch new file we have created a new file in here we can see the new file in here now if we refresh our bucket we can see the new file in our s3 bucket so one of the concern people have showed is whether uh, keeping these credentials inside the docker file is safe or not well of course it's not safe and it's not recommended at all but for s3fs to work we have to eventually store these credentials somewhere inside the directory in here now the only question remains is how do you pass these credentials to this Docker container? In this case, we are passing them as uh, arguments at the time of building this image from build args, as you can see. But there are several other ways. You can pass them from environment variables at runtime, or even you can store these credentials in any secret manager like Vault or AWS secret manager. And inside your Python script, you can access that secret manager and fetch those arguments and then so you can do all of these three steps inside your Python script. So in that case, we are going to avoid baking in these credentials inside the image, which should not be done in the production images at all. Instead, we are fetching the credentials at the runtime from any secret manager. If you want to see the example of that approach, let me know in the comments below and I'm going to show you how that's done in my next video. That is it guys, thank you so much for watching and if you like this content and want to see more of this, please thumbs up and leave a comment, share your thoughts and if you are new to this channel, please subscribe as this is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. I will see you in the next video, till then, thank you so much, bye.